A typhoon is a weather event that is common in the Philippines. Every year, an average of 22 typhoons are formed here and about 19 of which enter the Philippine area of responsibility. It is important that you understand typhoons to keep you safe from harm as much as possible. In this video lesson, we will explain how typhoons develop and ways to be prepared before, during, and after typhoons. Layers of the atmosphere are not visible to the naked eye. It serves as a protective layer of gases that shields us from harmful effects of too much rays from sunlight. Among the five layers of the atmosphere, the troposphere, which is the lowest layer, is exposed to natural phenomena and activities like weather conditions. It is the part of the atmosphere where clouds are formed. To understand the process of how a typhoon forms, you need to be familiar with concepts such as air mass and fronts. An air mass is a large body of air that acquires the physical characteristics of the surface where it forms. The properties of an air mass depends on the surface area over which it is moving. What happens when an air mass of different properties collide? Air masses do not mix if they do not have the same temperature and moisture content, thus forming a weather front or a boundary between two air masses. When warm air advances over cold air, or the cold air retreats as the warm air pushes over it, the boundary between the two air masses is called a warm front. Similarly, when cold air pushes under a warm air mass, thereby lifting it, the boundary between the two air masses is called a cold front. The word tropical cyclone is composed of two distinct words that completely describe its characteristic. Tropical refers to the geographical starting point which is usually hot and humid. Whereas cyclone refers to the cyclonic circulation of strong winds in the northern hemisphere which circulates counterclockwise and clockwise in the southern hemisphere. The eye of the typhoon is the calm area in the center of a tropical cyclone and is bordered by the spinning winds. The part of a tropical cyclone where the winds are strongest is in the eye wall. The rain bands are clouds and precipitation structure associated with an area of rainfall which is significantly elongated. The tropical cyclone undergoes a process of development called tropical cyclogenesis. This process includes warm ocean waters of at least 26.5 degrees Celsius throughout a sufficient depth about 50 meters. An atmosphere which cools fast enough with height that makes it potentially unstable to convection. Relatively moist layers in the atmosphere located about 5 kilometers from Earth's surface. Enough Coriolis force to deflect the converging wind causing cyclonic rotation and sustaining low pressure. A pre-existing disturbance near the ocean surface. And lastly, Less than 10 meters per second of vertical wind shear between the surface of the ocean and the atmosphere. Cyclones are categorized based on wind speed. A tropical depression is a tropical cyclone with maximum sustained winds of up to 61 kilometers per hour. Tropical storm with wind speed ranging from 62 to 68 kilometers per hour. Severe tropical storm that have wind speeds of 89 to 117 km per hour. Typhoons are those that have maximum wind speed of 118 to 220 km per hour. And a super typhoon which has maximum speed exceeding 220 km per hour. If the direction of the wind is counterclockwise, it indicates that the typhoon is in the northern hemisphere. If the eye of this typhoon will pass directly over an inhabited area, the people will experience strong winds twice. First is as the typhoon approaches the area that is followed by a period of calm without rain as the eye of the typhoon passes. And second is where the other side of the eye hits the area. History will show that the southwestern part of the North Pacific has more typhoons than any other place on Earth. In Northern Hemisphere, they travel westward due to Earth's rotation. Tropical cyclones are formed and can be intensified in a suitable environment and favorable factors. The ocean is the main source of the energy that fuels the typhoon. 
when the typhoon makes a landfall, there is not much source of evaporating moisture. Hence, its main source of energy is removed. Landforms act as the first line of defense against typhoons. Mountain ranges can weaken a typhoon due to the friction between the wind and the rough surface. Philippine Atmospheric Geophysical and Astronomical Services Administration or PAGASA is the agency that is responsible for studying the weather condition of the country. PAGASA issues storm signals and warnings on areas affected or will be affected. PAGASA forecasts weather systems daily through daily weather bulletins and rainfall forecasts. The Philippine Area of Responsibility or PAR is the smallest and the innermost monitoring domain whose boundary is closest to the Philippine Islands. It is being monitored by PAGASA for any tropical cyclone that enters it to give advisories to the Filipinos. Some of the typhoons that enter the country experience Fujiwara effect which strengthens their effects. Fujiwara effect is the interaction between two nearby tropical cyclones. It is known as the binary interaction and is named after Sakuhei Fujiwara, a Japanese meteorologist who discovered the phenomenon. For instance, in 2009, Typhoon Papeng had an interaction with Typhoon Kidan which brings elevated strength of intense winds and heavy rainfall. Aside from being typhoon prone, the Philippines throughout history is known to have been hit by the most powerful tropical cyclone. Pag-asa releases the local name of the typhoon which can be repeated. However, the name of the typhoon is replaced when it caused at least 300 deaths or 1 billion worth of agricultural and infrastructural damage. The public storm warning signals are hoisted before the corresponding meteorological conditions prevail over the locality. Tropical Cyclone Signal Number 1 Winds of 30 to 60 km per hour may be expected in at least 36 hours. Very light or no damage to higher structures. Slight damage to some houses of very light materials or makeshift structures in exposed communities. Some banana plants are tilted, a few downed and leaves are generally damaged. Rice crops, however, may experience significant damage when it is in its flowering stage. Tropical cyclone wind signal number 2 have wind speeds of 61 to 20 km per hour may be expected in at least 24 hours. Storm surge is possible at coastal areas with light to moderate damage to high structures. Unshielded, old dilapidated schoolhouses, makeshift shanties, and other structures of light materials are partially damaged or unroofed. Most banana plants and few mango trees are downed or broken. Considerable damage to shrubbery and trees with some heavy foliage trees blown down. Tropical Cyclone Wind Signal Number 3 Winds of 121 to 170 km per hour may be expected in at least 18 hours, with heavy damage to high-risk structures, moderate damage to medium-risk structures, increasing damage to old, dilapidated residential structures and houses of light materials. Dwarf type or hybrid coconut trees will be tilted and downed. Considerable damage to shrubbery and trees with heavy foliage blown off. Tropical cyclone wind signal number 4. Winds of 171 to 220 km per hour may be expected in at least 12 hours. Signal number 4 brings very heavy damage to high-risk structures, moderate damage to low-risk structures, considerable damage to structures of light materials, complete roof structure failures. A few houses of first-class materials are partially damaged. There is almost total damage to banana plantation. Rice and corn plantation may suffer severe losses. Tropical Cyclone Wind Signal Number 5 Winds are greater than 220 km per hour may be expected in at least 12 hours. A super typhoon will affect the locality. Widespread damage to higher structures. Complete roof failure on many residences and industrial buildings. Severe and extensive window and door damage. Most residential and institutional buildings of mixed construction may be severely damaged. 
Most tall trees are broken, uprooted, and defoliated. Coconut trees are stooped, broken, and uprooted. Few plants and trees survive. Rainfall warning level is based on rain gauge water height per hour. Yellow advisor means community awareness. Flooding is possible in low-lying areas and near river channels. Orange alert means community preparedness. Flooding is threatening in low-lying areas and near river channels. Red warning means emergency, which requires a community response. Severe flooding is expected. Take necessary precautionary measures. Here are some ways to be prepared before a typhoon. Keep yourself updated to the last weather forecasts. Check the electrical wirings and repair unstable parts of the house. At homes, families should always have an emergency kit. This kit should contain ready-to-eat foods such as canned goods and water. In any disaster, families should have emergency plans. They must know the contact numbers of each family members. Members should identify spots that are safe and locations where they should meet in case any family member gets lost. During typhoons, it is important to stay calm. Also, you should stay indoors and away from windows and glass doors. Keep track of news in televisions or in radios. It is also important to stay away from flood waters to avoid electrocution and contacting waterborne diseases such as leptospirosis, hepatitis A, and cholera. Watch out for live wires and outlets immersed in waters. Continue to be alert. Different types of phones would mean different hazards to experience during typhoons. People living in temporary structures or mobile homes are prone to hazards no matter how fast the homes are on the ground. High-rise buildings will experience strong winds. It may help if people would move on below the 10th floor. If you live in a house built near coasts, expect storm surge. Check every family member. Make sure that the house is stable after a typhoon. Wait for the announcement of the government agency that it is safe to return to the house. Boil the top water before drinking or using it for cooking. Stay tuned for latest weather report. Aside from Pag-asa, the National Disaster Risk Reduction Management Council or NDRRMC is a government agency mandated to provide necessary information and implement plans which could help people to be prepared and to respond to numerous natural calamities such as earthquakes and typhoons. NDRRMC disseminates information through several means. For instance, it sends SMS message to give flood warning signal to the people who are in the affected areas. If you want more science videos, make sure to subscribe to this channel. Thank you and always remember that you are all awesome.